What are entropy and stainless in a microservices architecture? Why is there so little material about them? Is it true they can make a system too costly to extend and maintain? Let's discover it in the next few minutes. We all know by now that designing and operating systems of microservices is not simple. From the design standpoint, the main goal is creating microservices which can be developed and operated independently. However, this is easier said than done, since there is always some connection between a microservice and the rest of the system. Proper modeling and clever integration patterns can help reduce coupling between services. From the operational standpoint, the distributed nature of our system forces us to rely heavily on automation. However, that means we need to master a vast number of technologies. Whether we manage them on-premise or use them as a service on a cloud provider, they are expensive no matter what. Thus, we need to make sure we have the right resources to operate a microservices system before we take the jump. There are another two issues that are rarely mentioned, entropy and staleness. The reason why there is little material about them is that they usually emerge in a mature system. It is the way all software ages. However, microservices systems tend to age faster than monoliths because of their complexity. They have more moving parts and with them more chances of issues. Entropy means disorder. As you can imagine, microservices architectures are prone to disorder over time. We might start with a well-defined design and clear integration patterns. However, the biggest challenge is safeguarding the design as the system grows and new features and themes are added to the product. Let's take this example. We have an urgent feature request from a very important client. If we do things properly, we need a new microservice and at least two weeks of work. But we have also a shortcut and we can reuse an existing microservice and do the same job in two or three days. Most teams will take the shortcut. They might promise themselves to revisit the feature in the future, but that rarely happens. Another source of entropy is diluted vision and knowledge. If the product is very popular, business might deploy additional teams with the intention of speeding up development. However, the larger the number of teams, the more complicated it is to ensure that the original system design is not broken. Knowledge is spread across small groups with different ideas and skill sets. Policing the efforts of each team is not feasible. In these scenarios, it is very important to create a governance layer for the product and to have technical leaders from all teams meet regularly to share feedback about the system. Aging comes also in the form of staleness. If you believe in creating microservices which are very focused, you might end up with a large number of services in your system. Eventually, you will have more microservices than teams. There will be applications you build once and never touch again. Those services can turn into cancer cells. Their libraries will become outdated and rigged with security issues. Sometimes they might also end up incompatible with their infrastructure or middleware. We upgrade a database and we start seeing errors. That means we need to devise a strategy to constantly update our microservices. One option is to use centralized dependency control and smart CI-CD pipelines. We can define all dependencies in a common manifest and trigger a full rebuild when they are updated. Obviously, we need also automated testing and a solid zero-downtime deployment strategy. Another issue caused by staleness is loss of knowledge about a microservice. The team who built it might have left the company and documented poorly. In extreme cases, it might be easier to rewrite it than update it. In conclusion, microservices are expensive. That said, you need to be pragmatic with them. You need to keep a healthy balance between the number of teams and number of microservices in your system. When in doubt, keep in mind that the main goal is to develop and operate each microservice independently. 
We also need to account for the potential addition of development teams, especially if the product is successful. In that particular case, our design needs to account for growth and leave space for new teams so that there is strong old ownership. That's all for today. Please help me by commenting, liking, subscribing and sharing the video. Thank you for your support and now time to learn something new.